hold on. We are recording and you are ready. I am Officer Isabel with the Stoughton Police Department. And hi, I'm Officer Bonda with the Stoughton Police Department. We are SROs uh, at your Stoughton Public Schools. Thank you for joining us for our presentation on marijuana and the law. I'm Robert Stewart. I'm an Assistant District Attorney with the Norfolk District Attorney's Office. I'm happy to be here tonight. I've been in both the juvenile and the district courts, and I'm looking forward to this. Hi, I'm a Detective Gagnon from the Randolph um, Police Department. I am the school resource officer at the Randolph High School, and I appreciate uh, Officer Bonder and Isabel inviting me to the meeting tonight to um, share some information with you. I'm Melissa Dawson, social worker over at the Stoughton Youth Commission, um, seeing youth and families for counseling in the town of Stoughton. Hi, I'm Stephanie Patton. I'm the prevention coordinator for the Oasis Coalition for the town of Stoughton. And I am really excited for the presentation you all are going to hear. Okay, so we're just going to jump right into it. Um, first thing we're going to go through is just a couple of the headlines. Um, as you can see here, Stoughton teen arrested in Boston armed robbery. robbery. Um, and then another one that we saw over this past year, uh, three indicted in connection with shooting death of Christian Vines in Stoughton, uh, where they're naming three people that were um, just recently indicted. We also had three that were arrested after a break-in here in Stoughton. And as part of that, there was a 16-year-old that was stabbed. There were two additional arrests that were made after the incident, and two of them were Stoughton juveniles. So with those, those top three headlines, there are actually many, many more over the past year that um, have been in the papers and in the news. Um, it, created a very big need. We felt as though it created a big need to really put out information to the town um, and with our schools. So we did some education uh, with our schools around um, the violence that we were seeing, the drug use that we were seeing. And then we had asked Stephanie Patton and Melissa Dawson if, um, if they were able to get together with us and we could offer this four-part program series, um, which we have been offering the past, this is the third week. Um, so we just wanna make sure that we're educating parents, students uh, and our community on a very, um, you know, on, on a level that they can understand in an, in an open platform to really let them know what's going on in our community. So one thing we did as part of this was we looked at calls for service in these uh, categories to see what the difference was from 2019 to 2020. Now for these slides, we decided to use the ages of 12 to 25. What we found was a lot of our teenagers are still hanging out with that um, early 20s crowd. Um, and they're doing it here, they're doing it in Boston, they're doing it in surrounding towns, which is what you're seeing in those headlines. So we really wanted to look at that age range and not just teenagers in Stoughton. And what we found was in the mental health category for calls, we had over a 50% increase in calls. Um, the same was true with section 12s, which are involuntary hospitalizations, um, which basically requires a person to have to go to a hospital to be evaluated by a psychologist and they're evaluated and then determined whether or not they need to remain in the hospital or released. Section 35s are court ordered um, assessments for substance use. And from 2019 to 2020, um, we saw it go from one to five calls in that age range. Overdoses went from one to four. With weapons, which included guns and knives, um, it was pretty steady. We had 21 in 2019 and 23 calls in 2020. We saw a slight increase with drugs. Now this is possession and use, um, calls related to both. We saw 34 in 2019 and 41 in 2020. 
And then with protective custodies, which is that last category there, um, it includes protective custodies for drugs and alcohol. So if somebody is not necessarily committing a crime when they're intoxicated or under the influence, we can take them into what's called protective custody until an able-bodied adult can take care of them or they can go home safely on their own. So we saw an increase from three to nine on those kind of calls. Okay, so we just wanted to put up this. Right, right. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Mm -mm. Oh, God. Okay, so we just wanted to put up like a really quick recap of what um, had happened in the past two episodes that we did. And this is the teen mental health and prevention that was um, taught by Melissa Dawson. Melissa, if you want to go over just some of these bullet points. Sure. So as we just saw with the data that Officer Isabel and Officer Bonda shared around um, the increase in spike in calls um, around mental health and crisis calls with our youth, um, that shows us that there has been a link with the decline in um, mental health quality of our youth um, very recently. So um, our first night in the series was around mental health um, and we were looking to just kind of share some resources. If you were a teen tuning in, if you're worried about yourself struggling with depression, anxiety, if you're worried about how to help your peers um, or if you were a parent worried about how to help your child, um, we, you know, we're just trying to share as much information as we can because we know, um, you know, knowledge is power and the more we help with what to look for, the more we can kind of be proactive um, and help keep our youth safe and healthy in town. So um, we did cover some of these things. So we looked, uh, we showed the signs and symptoms of what to look out for, um, the stressors that this pandemic has brought on to our teens, um, the link that, you know, mental health and substance abuse share, um, you know, the signs to look for if you're worried that your teen, if you're a parent tuning in, that your teen is using substances, um, how to improve your own mental health, like ways that are actually manageable that you can try to do yourself um, or parents, how you can help your child do that from home as much as you can, um, how to help your peers, of course, and how to talk to your teens, because we know sometimes that can be a struggle for some parents. So we gave some tips on how to even just open the conversation, um, assess for safety. Um, if there are some concerns around safety, um, using, you know, the notice talk act method. Um, and so, yeah, so if you were unable to attend that first night of the series, um, we were able to record it and we do have it up on different sites and um, social media sites as well on Facebook. So you can always access it later on in case you did miss it the night that it aired on the 19th of January. Um, so I think the next slide also shares the link where it can be accessed. Yep. Yep. So on the second night, we spent some time really thinking about marijuana. Um, and we reviewed actually some of those same cases that the officer shared at the beginning. And, um, and we had some conversation about um, the health impacts of marijuana, what some of the trends are locally in Stoughton, what that looks like for our young people. And again, shared some tips for parents um, on how to talk to your kids if you were concerned that they might be using, um, you know, some hints for what some of these newer products look like. And we shared some images that I think were very useful and illuminating for parents. And so as Melissa had indicated, we are making all of the video links to the presentations available. One of the places you can find them is on the Stoughton Oasis website under parent resources. Um, we are cleaning up actually the um, marijuana video, but it will be up there uh, hopefully by the time you see this video and um, you know, again, we wanted to remind people about the resource that are resources that are available to them both locally and in some of those crisis lines. And we will share those again at the end of this presentation in more detail. Are we ready for the video? All right. Marijuana is now legal for adult use in Massachusetts. Here's what you should know. First, you must be at least 21 to buy marijuana of any kind. Use only state-certified cannabis products. 
look for these labels. Using marijuana is not allowed in public or on federal lands, and you can't carry it across state lines. Don't drive if you've been using marijuana. To be safe, use alternative transportation. Be aware that landlords or employers may have their own policies about cannabis. Also, you can have up to one ounce on you and can grow six plants in your home or up to 12 with two or more adults. Remember, if you have more than one ounce of marijuana, you must keep it locked up. But to be safe, keep all of it out of reach and out of sight of children and pets. The cannabis products sold today are much more potent than in the past. They're also available in a wider variety, including edible foods and liquids. People often don't feel the effects of edibles right away. It can take several hours before it kicks in. There's so much more to know. Visit moreaboutmj.org. So that was just a quick video that was put out by the Cannabis Control Commission, which was formed um, when the state was looking to legalize marijuana. So we're just going to go over some of the bullet points now that go along with the legalization. So in Massachusetts, the legal age to purchase and consume it is still 21. Um, you can have, as an adult, you, over the age of 21, you can have up to one ounce on you. Um, residents can have up to 10 ounces at their home and adults are allowed to give away up to one ounce to another legally aged adult. And then you can also grow six plants in your home or up to 12 if there are two or more adults. So there's a couple of key things we want to definitely get into tonight and we will. Um, Officer Bonnet just talked about gifting. That's one thing that we run into as well as this pub public consumption public consumption, like it said in that video, and like it says here, it is illegal. Um, and so th that's something that we run into issues with. We also run into people driving under the influence of marijuana um, and that you can't have open containers in your cars. We're running into that as well. So we wanted to make sure we give you a visual of, of this information through that video and in bullet points because we're continuously seeing this over and over again with our younger population and adults. And All right. Now, um, uh, <laughs> sorry. So again, I'm Robert Stewart. I work with the Norfolk District Attorney's Office. Um, and marijuana is certainly something we've been seeing countywide, not just Stoughton alone. Um, and we find that marijuana is often used as, I know it sounds somewhat cliche, but a, a gateway drug, not necessarily for use, but certainly for um, what you would see in typical drug dealing where someone, uh, a young teenager typically is involved uh, with some older folks um, and they start, you know, dealing marijuana uh, at, at school or in their community. And then they're given an opportunity to essentially make more money. Um, and that's when they start selling pills and other narcotics and harder drugs because there's quite frankly more money um, involved in that. Um, and one of the reasons that happens is because there's less exposure for the adults who have a, they'll be much more likely to go to jail. Um, whereas the, the, the teenagers are essentially told, you're not gonna go to jail, you don't have to worry about it, but we'll get to that later. There are certainly significant impacts on the teenager's life as well as their parents. Um, looking in particularly of concern is when there are young girls involved um, in, in the dealing of uh, marijuana and narcotics and drugs, because oftentimes they are essentially being groomed for the sex trade. And it's a very unfortunate reality uh, that we do see here um, in our community, both in Stoughton and um, countywide. Uh, it's, it's just something to, you know, be on the lookout for, be aware of, you know, certainly not trying to scare anyone, but it's just, you know, the more knowledge you have, the better you off you'll be. Um, and I think it's important because to note that THC is a class C drug, whereas marijuana is a class D drug. And um, the reason I think that's important because THC is a class C drug and it has a significantly enhanced penalty, whereas marijuana, a class D drug, is uh, essentially just a misdemeanor where if you are um, charged with a possession of a class C type crime, um, you actually have exposure to state prison time up to five years. Uh, the penalties are essentially the same for both juveniles and adults. Um, so a teenager can have the same sort of penalty. Um, there are some differences, but it's essentially there is the same sort of exposure. If we can go to the next slide. 
Um, so here is just is kind of a general rundown of the different laws. Um, you know, I, I certainly won't read them all to you, but it did there. It, it does. It, this is a good representation of the penalties that are faced. Um, certain things are just a civil ticket. Uh, marijuana is legal in the Commonwealth now in Massachusetts. Um, there are certain ramifications for uh, a, a juvenile having it. Uh, it includes a, a ticket, but typically the, the juvenile, the teenager would not be paying that their parents were. That's a burden on the family. Um, there's a drug class of community service and that drug class um, is it's, it's mandatory. Uh, it has to be at least four hours long. It's typically in class. Things are a little different with COVID, um, but it's supposed to be four hours of in class learning and a minimum of 10 hours of community service. Uh, and typically the, the kids aren't taking themselves to this, to, to their parents or guardians to take them. Um, so it's a burden on the whole family. It's just not a penalty that's borne by the, uh, the teenager alone. Um, go to the next slide. So this, this is certainly important, um, particularly the illegal gift. Uh, sometimes, you know, people think it's, oh, no big deal. You know, marijuana is legal. I legally bought it. I'll just give it to um, my friend here, the, the younger individual, 16, 17 years old, uh, so maybe a family member, something like that. That's still a crime, and you can actually be arrested for that. Uh, you'd be potentially held overnight and then brought into court the next day to be uh, arraigned. Um, and it does, it is a misdemeanor, but it does have a two year um, uh, jail sentence associated with it. Whether or not the person would go to jail, it depends on a lot of factors, um, but it, there is always that exposure. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, you might be trying to be friendly, trying to be nice, and that's, you know, it's maybe well intentioned, um, but it is a crime. There is a significant, a significant penalty. Um, and I would also like to point out, particularly on this slide, the social host law. So as a homeowner or uh, the, the individual on the lease at an apartment, um, if you allow individuals under the age of 21 to be there and, and knowingly um, ingesting or smoking marijuana, that too is a crime. Um, and that also, you could possibly be arrested, you could be summoned into court. If you weren't, you'd be arrested, potentially held overnight and brought into court uh, the same day or the next day. Uh, that's not exactly a fun experience for anyone um, that itself is certainly a penalty, um, but beyond that, you are exposed to jail time uh, and certainly fines, and the fines can get pretty steep here, up to $2,000, which is a significant burden. So here I just want to show sort of what I talked about earlier, how teenagers are exposed uh, to, if you will, a less likely scenario to go to jail. Now, the penalties are essentially the same. So here we have two individuals, and primarily their only difference is their age. Uh, now, Joey Jones is 16. He's been charged with possession distributed Class C substance. Granted, that's on school grounds. Whereas Joe Jones is 28, and he's charged with the same thing. They both had 500 cartridges of THC oil. That's a Class C substance, even though it's derived from marijuana. Um, both of them can potentially be held on bail, but it's far more likely that the adult will be held on bail. Um, $1,500 is not an unreasonable amount, depending on a number of things. It could be far lower. It could be no bail at all. Um, but it is something that's more likely for an adult than a juvenile. Um, if there were to be bail uh, placed on a juvenile, then the parents and the family or the guardian would have to come up with that money and pay it out of their own pocket. It almost never comes from the juvenile, even if they're working, uh, things are difficult in that sense. Um, there are other ramifications. The probation department with the court system gets involved. DCF can potentially be involved investigating kind of what the home life is like. Um, and another scenario that is less likely with adults, more likely with um, teenage and juveniles who are charged, is they'd be potentially sentenced to home confinement while their case is pending, which essentially means they'd be affixed with a GPS device in their home 24 hours a day, seven days a week, except potentially for things like medical appointments, dentist appointments, um, and unfortunately court hearings. Now, with having them home all the time, Sometimes it necessitates a parent or someone else being home to kind of keep an eye on things going on, uh, making sure there's some sort of structure in the home. Uh, that way the, the child doesn't violate their conditions of release, which here would be home confinement, um, and are set, essentially staying away from the scenarios and situations that got them here anyways. Uh, at the end of the day, the most likely outcome for a juvenile is the burden's gonna be very heavy on the parents. Um, it's 
sort of an unfortunate reality, but oftentimes that's a significant amount of community service. The, the, there is a community service bus in Norfolk County, particularly for juveniles, but they have to be brought there it's usually on Saturday mornings. Uh, it's, it's relatively early in the day and they go off and they'll clean parks or things of that nature. But um, the burden is also on the family and I can't stress that enough. Um, I, I spend time in the juvenile court and I know one of the major things to try to prevent um, this kind of behavior is the fact that the parents are also in a way being punished. Um, so through their own discipline, they uh, essentially prevent this from happening. So not only does the juvenile have to go through this again, but then as a parent's family guardian, they don't have to go through it again either. Okay, so what's going on in Stoughton? I mean, you saw some of our headlines. Um, we talked about how we've seen a lot of kids gifting marijuana to um, their friends. Um, we talked about social host. That's another big thing that we see around here. Um, and basically it's knowledge. Like the, the teenagers seem to think that weed is legal where we know that it is not legal for them to possess if they're under 21. Um, but, you know, our big thing is, is with the legalization, kids now have more access to the products because if they do live in a household with somebody that's 21 years of age, hopefully a guardian, um, which they should be, um, they have a right to have that in their house. So, okay, that, that's all right. But are we taking the steps that we need to um, as guardians and locking that up if it's over and out and keeping it away, away from them. And we're running into, um, obviously roadblocks with that because our teens are still getting their hands on it. Some of the things that's happened since they've gotten their hands on it are, um, you know, those headlines, these other four, you know, an armed robbery with two guns, attempted robbery resulting in the stabbing, all of these, these, four titles right here, these four posts right here, were having to do with marijuana and more specifically edibles. Um, our teens in Stoughton have really become quite interested in edibles and um, the THC cartridges. They have them on their social media posts, whether it's Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, um, almost daily. I was actually on um, social media earlier and added more slides to this presentation because I saw new posts go up today about what our kids are selling. So um, again, I'd like to thank you for inviting me tonight. Um, so I work closely with the school resource offices in Stoughton um, because our juveniles um, you know, Randolph kids are going to Stoughton, Stoughton kids are going to Randolph. Um, just like uh, Officer Isabel had mentioned at the beginning of these slides, that one juvenile that was um, murdered and three were indicted, he was a Randolph juvenile. That affected all of the juveniles in our town. It was devastating to the kids. Um, it affects them um, in school. It just, it, it affects their lives, um, you know, because it's, it's, it's close to home for them, you know, that everybody, they're all good friends and, but it was uh, around drugs and, and um, I've seen a lot of increase with uh, marijuana and alcohol use because kids aren't um, doing their routine daily thing, going to school this year has been really tough on them and they tend to, you know, experiment more and get into different things and mom and dad are at work or they work overnights and, you know, to try to, you know, pay the bills. So a lot of times the kids are home by themselves and there's just no, um, there's no guidelines for them. So, um, due to that, you know, we, we've just seen an increase in a lot of um, domestic violence is uh, it really uh, increased a lot. Um, myself and my partner, uh, we just arrested a 15 year old. Um, him and two of his friends stole a motor vehicle. Uh, we got into a chase with them. They fled and we chased one of them through the woods and he ended up having a firearm on him at 15. Um, so 
the, the robberies that are going on in town, the shoplifting. Um, we have a lot of runaways. Um, A.D. Stewart, he mentioned earlier about um, the human trafficking situations. Uh, we, we deal with a lot of that with the runaways, with the females and a lot of drugs uh, revolve around that as well. Um, so, and at the end of this slide, it says two Randolph juveniles shot and killed. The, the one was the, uh, the Stoughton shooting and one um, actually happened in Boston. And, you know, it's just unfortunate um, that all of this is going on, but it's, just, it's this is great to, to do all of this. And I, you know, hopefully the parents and the kids uh, that are gonna watch this or are watching this um, can realize that, you know, these type of things create, um, poor decisions, um, so. Thank you. So now we're gonna talk about um, some of the marijuana trends that we're seeing um, here in Stoughton. Um, so one of the things that we talked about a little bit is marijuana infused products and edibles. And under the law, there are a number of products that are allowed to be infused with it, including edibles, beverages, um, and ointments. And some people say that edibles are a healthier alternative to smoking and inhaling the marijuana. So they're more likely to use an edible than actually smoking the product. The concern comes where um, the edibles that people are able to purchase look a lot like candy or brownies or some type of chocolate. And they're really appealing to kids. Um, those that are really young and don't realize what it is, it can definitely affect their body um, in, in horrible ways. Um, and it's also appealing to teenagers who are experimenting or um, have already experienced it, experimented and it's just fun for them. Um, there's this thought, I don't, I'm not sure exactly where it comes from, but that, you know, as soon as I eat this edible, I'm it, I'm going to become high instantly. And what um, our teams don't realize is that most edibles take, you know, an hour to an hour and a half to even kick in. So they eat more in the meantime, thinking that it's not working. And then they are, they go into panic mode because their body can't handle it. Um, not so much something that we would call an overdose on marijuana, but um, it is definitely, um, like we had talked about last last week in Stephanie's um, presentation, the effects on the body, you can go into panic mode, have anxiety attacks. We have had um, teenagers sent to the hospital because they they thought they were going to die because they've eaten too many too many edibles. So one thing that the Cannabis Control Commission um, was tasked with doing is coming up with rules for the packaging of different products. So anything that is legally sold in Massachusetts has to have these two symbols on it. Um, and there's limits to the number of servings and how much total can be contained in a particular product. Um, a lot of what we are seeing though, does not have these symbols on it. So they're coming from someplace other than a legal um, marijuana dispensary. So the, you have a lot of pictures coming up um, that we'll walk you through. So this was a seizure recently. Um, if you take a look at this, it's not a Massachusetts product. Um, and there was, oh my, there must have been at least a hundred of these. Um, in Massachusetts, you're not supposed to have anything that looks like candy. If you look at this right now, it's appealing to anybody that likes Dunkin' Donuts and Wonka chocolate bars. I mean, this completely goes against the, um, the outline that Massachusetts put out with um, the Cannabis Control Commission on how to market their products. Um, these are the glow extracts. So these also are not a Massachusetts product. Um, this is the number one product that we see uh, at the high school and the middle school. So um, 
it is an attachment. You just, it's a vape essentially, but it is pure THC. So this is what uh, ADA Stewart was talking about earlier when he was going over some of those laws. If your student or, or somebody that you know that's under 21 has this on them, just one, just one cartridge, that's class C. That's more, um, you, like you're going to get in more trouble for having that than if you were to have like a, like a little dime bag of weed. Um, this is also what I just referenced earlier. This is, this is on social media. This is Snapchat right here. These are our teens in Stoughton. Um, like I said, 12 to 25 years old. This is what we're seeing. This one was part of the seizure with the Wonka bars. Um, so these ones you can actually see down on the bottom left that they do have the correct symbols to be sold in Massachusetts. So the likelihood is that this came from an actual dispensary um, and then it was being sold to teens that were underage. But it was most likely obtained legally by an adult who's over 21 and it was passed along to someone underage to then go and sell to his friends. Yeah, this was not a seizure from somebody that was over 21 years old. This was also in that same seizure. Um, the, this TKO extract is the THC extract. It's not a Massachusetts product. Um, there was, I'm not sure how many boxes of these uh, vapes that we seized. And on the right-hand side here, you, these are pre-rolled um, joints or blunts that you can get from, I, I would say a blunt because there's a lot of marijuana in that that you can get from dispensaries, but this was not in a package. They were just in like a um, Ziploc bag. This again is, um, this actually, I found this today. So this was on our, um, our kids in Stoughton Snapchat today. Um, just advertising what they have. And you can see with these how they're being marketed towards kids and they look like candy. I mean, if you, you see the arrow pointing there, that's where it references THC being in the product. It's teeny tiny on the package. If you looked at that quickly as a parent, you may not notice that there's marijuana leaves all over the outside of that package. You would see Sour Patch Kids. You would see Skittles. So unfortunately, these are being marketed towards kids. These are also not packaged to be sold in Massachusetts, so they came from some other source. Um, this is more, I, this might have been Instagram. Um, so we had kids that are also making their own edibles. Uh, on the right hand side, that's like a Fruity Pebble breakfast THC bar. I'm not really sure what they were going for there. Um, the huge concern in that is, you know, the edibles that are already out there that are you know, professionally created, if you will, um, there's some type of quality assurance that happens. Um, and even when that happens, over 50% of the time, it's not even correct when they give you the THC content in it. So the figure of something that comes from a lab can't even get it right. Uh, teenagers making it at their homes are definitely not going to get it right. So what they have to go to, uh, the process they have to go through to even you know, get the, the butter to make these products or the oils to make these products could one blow them up because they have to uh, use butane, but also um, you have no idea the amount of THC that is going into these products that they're making, which could also just put you right into the hospital. Just some more pictures of ones that, you know, look like a regular candy that you would buy at the convenience store. Um, it's really hard to tell just quickly looking at it that um, there's something on them indicating that there's marijuana in them. Kristen, you can talk about these ones here. Yeah, these were taken off of um, a middle school student. Um, he was uh, selling them to middle schools. We actually had a female middle school student um, that overdosed, like you were talking earlier. Uh, she had, didn't have any knowledge of them and um, 
took more than one. I mean, and you can see the size of them. They're, they're not small. So if you ate more than one of these, um, she did end up going to the hospital. But yeah, this was um, this was from the middle school. And since we were here, I just kind of wanted to show um, some of the other things that we've come across at um, Stoughton in the past year. It's, I'm sure that they've seen it in Randolph and all of our surrounding communities. And I also wanted to show these four specific photos because you can see how things are packaged. So in the top left-hand corner, that is heroin right there. Um, and then we have, which is in like a, a regular, um, like the old fashioned sandwich bags that don't have the zips. And then you have Coke in the upper right-hand corner that's in a uh, cellophane to a um, pack of cigarettes. And in the bottom, um, I didn't open it, so I can't tell you what's in there. I could probably guess what's in there. There's probably going to be a little heroin in there. But I wanted to show you that sometimes um, users are going to have their drugs packaged in uh, tinfoil. And on the bottom right, I'm not sure how many people realize this, but ecstasy for the past few years has really um, come up. A lot of teens and a lot of uh, adults are really using uh, a good amount of ecstasy these days. And then I just wanted to give you kind of an, uh, a general idea. So this was put out um, by the Cannabis Control Commission. It's on their website uh, back in November. And at, at that time, uh, this is what they have for dispensaries, whether it's medical marijuana or for recreational use around the state. So you can see in Norfolk County, we have 30 dispensaries. Um, that number could definitely have gone up since November. Um, but just so that you're aware of what's surrounding, what's surrounding you. So oh, this is me. Um, and so we also wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, it's important to be aware that in states where marijuana is legal, that some of the data, and this comes from the national, um, uh, drug use study of drug use and household survey. Um, these are state estimates that, um, that they provided in 2019. So this is a national, um, very, um, reputable survey source that we do find that, um, among our adolescents that we are seeing increases in the percentage of young people that use in places where marijuana is legal. And I think that's really important to just keep in mind. And it's for all the reasons that, um, we're sort of shared earlier that it's easier to access products in places where it's legal. Um, it doesn't make the black market go away, but it does mean that there's more legal product around. And in fact, you saw that um, a lot of products are really easily diverted. Um, so products that are being produced in other states, we're seeing here in Massachusetts, we're seeing them with our, our teens. And so even though the dispensaries are, they have a lot of um, rules that they all need to follow around how they do sales. And um, I would guess that just like liquor stores, most sales, most sales are happening legally. Um, it's what happens after those legal sales when those products get diverted. And we also just know that when things are um, legal, you know, and alcohol is a good example of this and there's more of it around, it does make things feel safer for young people. And so, you know, we talked in our last um, show about really some of the the reasons why marijuana is certainly not safe for uh, somebody whose brain is still developing and, and some of the issues with that. So again, this is really more about just being aware of the landscape and how important it is to talk to your teens because we are in a state where marijuana is legal for adults. Oh no, <laughs> our screen share went away. That's not good. Um, hold on, let me bring that back really quickly for you all. I don't know why that happened. Um, one second. I was doing so great with the technology tonight. Come on. All right, here we go. Um, let me share that again. Sorry for that. Um, we also wanted to share with you um, what happened in Stoughton, just in terms of our own timeline of um, what things look like. So you saw what things were, sort of were looking like in the state and across the country um, in, you know, just to sort of remind people that the state of Massachusetts actually decriminalized marijuana back in 2008. And so, um, you know, 
I think when people think about legalization, what they a lot of times they're thinking about is, um, you know, what happens in the court systems and arrests and um, and actually Massachusetts um, took a big step for that a long time ago um, with decrim. Um, in 2012, there was a medical marijuana law that was passed in Massachusetts. So at that point, it became legal to be able to access um, mar medical marijuana um, through certain facilities. In 2013, the town of Stoughton, um, like many towns across the Commonwealth, had to um, think about zoning for medical marijuana. And so we, we do have zoning um, in Stoughton um, for if a medical marijuana facility were wanted to open for where that specifically could happen in our community. And, um, and the town did that because if we didn't zone for it, it, it would mean as functionally there, there'd be no zoning. So um, a facility could open anywhere. So, um, so that happened in town meeting in 2016, as a lot of you remember, that was when we on the, um, the state ballot in November had the question about whether to legalize uh, marijuana for recreational purposes for people over the age of 21 in Stoughton um, that you can see in that little pie chart underneath 49% um, of the population in Stoughton voted in favor of recreational marijuana. Um, 3% of the population abstained and 48% voted against that law. There was a lot of confusion about what that law meant and what it would look like. Um, and a lot of people voted in favor of recreational marijuana and at the same time were not interested in having these facilities in their own communities. And so as a town um, in April of the following year in um, 2017, we on the um, ballot for select men um, and select women in our community, we put um, a question asking our own residents if they wanted to vote to allow um, recreational marijuana facilities in Stoughton or whether to prohibit them. And it looks like my little uh, pie chart came out a little funky there, but 62% um, of Stoughton residents who voted in that election voted to that they wanted to prohibit um, retail marijuana sales in Stoughton. Um, so that didn't mean that they were necessarily against the concept of um, legalizing marijuana, but this was really about whether or not we wanted to allow local sales. And um, at the time, because the town had voted in favor of the recreational marijuana law, there was a two-step process. Um, and so we had a ballot initiative. And then um, a month later at town meeting, we basically the ballot initiative allowed the town to go to town meeting and talk about a zoning bylaw. And so the way... Um, this functions in, in cities, in towns in Massachusetts is, is really through zoning. And so the town passed um, by a pretty big margin at town meeting um, to restrict um, and to make it basically un, um, something that was not allowable in our zoning bylaws to have any type of marijuana retail manufacturing, um, any type of facilities. So um, that happened in 2017. Um, some of you may remember that. There was a lot of um, discussion and education about that. And so that's where we stand today. So even though um, Stephanie just explained that we are not going to be selling um, the marijuana products in Stoughton, if we uh, think back to that map that was shown, there's still 30 other retailers in Norfolk County. And then uh, Plymouth County is right next to us, as well as Bristol County, and they have even more. So we might not have uh, the opportunity for our teens to get it in our community, but certainly there's plenty of places for them to grab it up. So one of the reasons we put together this series to begin with was we wanted to be able to provide some resources for parents and teens to educate themselves. Um, if they have identified a problem to be able to get the help that they need. Um, so these are some resources that are specific to marijuana and the law. Um, and then as a whole for the program, we have a whole list of other resources, um, crisis prevention lines, um, that sort of thing. And also keep in mind, if you are ever in immediate need of help, you can always call 911. Um, that's what we're here for. Um, so we want to make sure that, you know, you have all the information you need and you can reference these at any point in time.